the, the registrar, God is assistant, to send a letter reminding me and the mother of, of my child that we hadn't had our baby daughter registered. And this, this is what I sent. Declaration of denial of consent to register children. We, the authorised representatives for the legal persons, my straw man, and you know you haven't seen that name, but that's, that's the mother of my children, do hereby declare that the following is a verified plain statement of the facts as we perceive them. Let it be known by all concerned, interested and affected parties that, one, we have been granted irrevocable superior guardianship rights over our children by the creator of the universe. Two, we have accepted irrevocable power of attorney over our children's well-being and property until the 18th anniversary of their birth. Three, born on behalf of our children, we have settled their entire legal estate into private trust, which is administered for their maximum benefit. Four, the property settled into said private trust includes, without limitation, any and all information pertaining to the existence of our children, strictly precluding the disclosure of the details of their birth to any party whatsoever. Material evidence demonstrating that any and all disclosure of information pertaining to the existence of our children um, would demonstrate a breach of the aforementioned private trust and all those parties responsible for said breaches will be liable for charges of £30,000 sterling or functional currency of the United Kingdom per occurrence. Six, we do not recognise or consent to any perceived obligation, whether statutory or otherwise, to register the births of our children under any circumstances whatsoever. Seven, as trustees of the aforementioned private trust, we affirm jointly and without division that we refuse to grant or consent and or authorisation to the registrar or any other individual organisation or legal entity to register information pertaining to the birth of our children under any circumstances whatsoever. Declaration. We, the undersigned, hereby affirm to the very best of our knowledge the entirety of the foregoing is true, correct, and not misleading. In the geographical area of annuity upon crime, this declaration is autographed, <laughs> sealed, and date stamped by the post office on the 10th day of the month of May, the year was 2010 AD. Now, obviously, they like that about as much as the tax man like them. And around about the same time, Amit also became a father, so he started the same process. The difference that I did was where Michael responded to a letter, I actually sent to reset the declaration. Um, I think it was about three weeks of my daughter being born. So we sent it straight to the registrar. Sorry, we sent it straight to the registrar um, of our local county, and then we got a letter back, uh, which I think is a similar one to what you got. Yeah, I don't know. Which is a notice requiring a qualified informant. I love the wording. Uh, to give information for the registration of birth. Now, in this notice, by that, um, by the declaration that has been drawn up, they have actually already made breaches by quoting the name of the, or quoting that somebody was born on that, on that date. Yeah. So, from there, we sent, and I think Michael did the same thing. Yeah. We sent a conditional acceptance. Dear Caroline Short Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Following receipt of your notice dating, whatever date is, and pursuant to the enclosed uh, notice of appointment, um, I hereby serve notice of conditional acceptance, wherefore mother straw man and father straw man agree to register the births of their children in the most expedient manner possible upon receipt of the following items. Number one, material evidence demonstrating that mother straw man and father straw man have not been granted super irrevocable superior guardianship rights over their children by the creator of the universe. <laughs> now, I feel that that's going to be a very difficult one for the <laughs> Number two, material evidence demonstrating that mother straw man and father straw man have not accepted irrevocable power of attorney over their children's well-being and property until the 18th anniversary of their birth. Number three, material evidence demonstrating that the information requested has not been settled into a private trust, precluding the disclosure of any and all details of their children's birth to any third party whatsoever. And you don't it's a private trust, it's not something that you are lodging into the public, so there is no need for there to be a public notice of that trust existing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, material evidence demonstrated that all disclosures of information pertaining to existence of their children would not represent a breach of the aforementioned private trust, as well as what Michael has been talking about earlier, the laws of equity. Material evidence demonstrated that all those parties responsible for said breaches would not be liable for charges of £30,000 sterling or functional currency of the United Kingdom per occurrence as is mentioned in the original declaration. Uh, 
Uh, number six, material evidence demonstrated that the mother's straw man and father's straw man have consented to the statutory duty prescribed by the Birth and Death Registration Act 1953, without which no sustainable cause of action for prosecution can arise. Number seven, material evidence demonstrating that the mother's straw man and father's straw man have not unequivocally denied their consent and or authorisation to the registrar and or any other individual organisation or legal entity to register information pertaining to the birth of their children under any circumstances whatsoever. Number eight, material evidence demonstrating that your statement that, and this obviously depends on what you may receive, the female child was born to on a straw man on or about the date does not represent two clear breaches, obviously with, depending on the letter one on it, just one breach, um, of trusts by the registrar of births and deaths. Number nine, material evidence demonstrated that any and all attempts to enforce statutes upon persons who have not consented to perform under said instruments would not represent fundamental breaches of international human rights laws as well as the laws of nature. Please find enclosed a certified copy of Declaration of Denial of Consent to Registered Children, which was the original declaration uh, that was sent originally in the first place, uh, and then the usual seven days uh, failure to deliver an appropriate response will result in lawful presumption that the non-negotiable conditions cannot be met and that your request has been duly withdrawn with no further action required. Without malice, Mr. Jim, or your community of accession since 17 So we both got um, this from the Home Office. Identity and Passport Service. Um, General Register Office at Smedley Hydro, which I found the word, Birkdale Southport. Um, it says personal with the address on there. Dear um, Mother Strawman, report of an unregistered child by the Registrar of Derby Registration District. The above registrar has reported that the birth of your daughter born on the date has not been registered despite the issue of a formal requisition asking you to do so. It is the statutory duty, which Michael will go into in this next letter, of a parent to register the birth of a child within 42 days of the birth, and failure to do so is a punishable offence. Uh, what's the punishment? Uh, a fine of two pounds per current. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as well, so you have a lot of kids. Birth, birth and wow. death registration, Act 1953. The registrar has been instructed to send a further requisition asking you to give information for the registration of the birth at the registry office, which will be the local registry office. Please note that if you give information to uh, any registry office in England and Wales, uh, you, sorry, you can. If you do not attempt to register your son's birth, now, I didn't have a son, we had a daughter, they mentioned a daughter in earlier in the letter, but I said it's a son, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the Registrar General will have to consider what steps must be taken to meet the requirements of the law. I must emphasise that if the birth is not registered, the child will be unable to obtain a birth certificate, which will cause considerable, di considerable difficulty in the future. Why? Yes. Following receipt of your letter dated 11th of June, the contents of which you all refused to cause on the basis that you would fail to respond appropriately to the notice of conditional acceptance dated 27th of May, born on behalf of Strawman, I hereby serve notice of opportunity to cure dishonour. Wherefore, in good faith, Mother Strawman and Father Strawman agreed to register the birth of their children in the most expedient manner possible upon receipt of the following items. Now, the first are just the ones that Amit's already listed. And number three is a slide. Number three, slide amendment. Material evidence demonstrating that the information requested has not been settled into a private trust, precluding the disclosure of any and all details of their children's birth to any third party whatsoever, unless that action is of significant benefit to the beneficiaries. They have to demonstrate the benefit. Ask the registrar what the benefit of registration is, and they can only tell you what their benefit is, what they don't want. So, they can't say anything. They can't even say to you. Most people, including us, we, we thought, but since 1983, since there was a statutory instrument passed in 1983, everybody needed to provide their, their child's birth certificate to get a passport. Not the case if the parents are both UK or deemed UK citizens. And if you have an NHS number, well, that would, be, that would seem to be more evidence that your child is qualified as a citizen and therefore has to be given a passport upon request by the Guardian. Therefore, what's the downside here? Just try and find anywhere anything that tells you why do I have to register my children? All you will find every point is you have to do it because it's the law. Which to me, and I'm sure to all of you as well, isn't really a just explanation. I haven't been able to find one single prosecution book.